Uh, this is section 3.5, number 21, and the related problem, number 22. We are given um, an unusual matrix. Uh, three entries are zero. One non-zero entry. Uh, its eigenvalues are repeated and equal to zero. Uh, however, we do find a non-zero eigenvector using our standard equation. We see the condition for these two equations to be satisfied is if y has to be 0. So our eigenvector is 1, 0. I'm just commenting here. It's not essential. But if I write this as a linear system, it's a very decoupled system. Um, well, it's partially decoupled. I take that back because x does depend on y. But we have a statement that dx dt is equal to 2y. So when y is positive, um, my solutions are growing, my x component is growing, and when y is negative, my x solutions are um, becoming more, um, are decreasing. Okay. Uh, when w I see that we have repeated eigenvalues, this is our standard form of our solution. This is unlike our other forms with our, our constants k1 and k2. Um, v0 is an initial uh, condition. Why? Because when t is equal to 0 at time 0, this term goes away. e to the lambda t is 1. And so y at time 0 is v0. v0 has to be the initial condition. y1 is given by this little formula as derived in class and is also shown in the book. But since lambda is equal to 0, this equation reduces quite a bit to simply being v0 plus tv1. And v1 is just a times v0. Given that v0 is an x0, y0, it's an initial condition, we can go ahead and see that v1 being a times v0 is just 2y0, 0. Uh, on the next slide, I'm, um, I'm continuing this problem. We now have, I'm sort of in problem 22 as well at this point. Um, this would be our general solution now. Uh, to remind you that um, uh, if we are on the x-axis in our direction of eigenvectors, every point along here is an equilibrium solution. And I could put little... The, the book shows these as an infinite set of points. We darken them all up just like we darken up the, the origin. Um, these are equilibrium points, meaning that if my, my function at time 0 is at one of these points on the x-axis, uh, it never leaves. It's an equilibrium point. But if I were to start at some other point, let's say right here, as an x0, y0, and here I am at t equal to 0, I interpret this general solution to say, um, OK, so as time moves forward, uh, this point is fixed. And what's happening is we're adding to it something moving in the x direction. Uh, if y0 is positive, then we're moving in the positive x direction as t increases. And I see uh, solutions that look like horizontal lines passing through my initial condition and moving to the right. So I can do a series of those. We're always moving to the right. If my initial condition is below the axis and my y value is negative, so if y naught is a negative number, which would be for anything below the axis, 
then I start at the same point, but as time increases, as time becomes more positive, it's multiplying by a negative number, and our direction is still parallel to the x-axis, but we're moving to the left. Our solutions are moving to the left. And so there's our face portrait, there's our general solution. That's uh, just working with the first matrix in 21 and 22. Um, but the second one in part B is very similar. The pictures, I believe, would probably be reversed in terms of their orientation. I um, hope this helps. Good luck. Thank you.